everybody. I'm your host, Nimsh, and I'm joined here by my co-host, Monk, at HTC Invitational, and we are going to see a Cloud9 versus Cloud9 match. Monk, what are we going to see? Well, we're going to see, uh, unfortunately, not Nimsh versus anyone, but it's going to be Strive Crow versus Tides of Time. Probably like two players that last year they regarded as the best players of the time, but these days it's more of like uh, Tides of Time, he's gotten a lot better lately, but he's kind of followed off when he took kind of a break from Hearthstone. Shrive Crow, meanwhile, he did really well at the beginning of GVG, but yet again, he hasn't had really great results. Uh, he has done, I believe, uh, gotten number three in the Kingwin Pro League, but besides that, he's kind of fallen off in the first round of every tournament. Um, that being said, it's actually kind of a clash of styles in the next match because Tides of Time is bringing completely wacky decks, decks that no one has ever seen, while Strife Crow is bringing the three most popular decks um, of the tournament, Hybrid Hunter, Grim Patron Warrior, and um, Handlock. Yeah, so uh, we are going to see six decks. And uh, now you can see the bracket and how those players got here. So Ties of Time, one versus LA, then one versus RDU, and it's going to face Strife Crow, who won versus Dog, and then one versus Trump, a very nail-biting match, coming down to the last top deck, Inner Rage, enabling Strife Crew to, to finish Trump in a best of five series. I'm super excited about this match, but Monk, we can give stuff to our viewers. And can you remind our viewers again how to get into the giveaway? There's no raffle, guys, just a giveaway. Yeah, um, very, uh, very easy giveaway. All you have to do is use the hashtag HTC Esports, tweet at them about anything you want, but probably you want to uh, stick to talking about the tournament. Are you enjoying it so far? How, how are you enjoying it? What's your favorite deck of the tournament that you've seen? Who's your favorite player of the tournament? Oh yeah, definitely. And I want to I also want to give a shout out to Trump. You know, we are doing this tournament on Trump's channel. He played uh, yesterday. He won uh, today. Unfortunately, he lost versus Strife Crow in a very close match. But now Strife Crow is is having Trump's hopes on his uh, shoulders and is going to face versus Tides of Time. So um, yeah, this was a pretty uh, excited turn, uh, exciting tournament so far. And uh, we are going to have that one match. And then the winner is going to face Forsen in the final. I said that first. Forsen in the final. Final send. Just waiting for one of those Cloud9 players. Yeah, he's definitely evolved uh, beyond the uh, 04 that he's t typically gotten in tournaments. Um, it's not too fair, I would say. He's gotten 4 0 in tournaments before. For example, the Gfinity Spring Masters number one tournament, where he just wrecked the group stage, but unfortunately, he uh, kind of fell short. Now he's moving on to the finals against one of our next players, Tides of Time and Strife Crow. All right, so um, we talked about the decks. Like Tides of Time is bringing those uh, walkie decks with um, volcanic drakes and murlocs, and the Strife Crow is bringing the cookie cutters. Who do you think has an edge? Like, which lineup is better? Is there any specific deck that uh, that can't win at all versus the lineup? I mean, with such unfamiliar decks like the ones that Tides of Time is running, uh, it's going to be anyone's guess. But I would say that overall, um, it's Tides of Time's lineup that's more volatile especially the murloc warlock because that deck it can just like it can just win so many matches it can easily take a win but at the same time it can easily go 0-3 because of the inconsistency of murlocs all right this is it this is the moment tides of time versus strife crow game number one is starting warlock versus warrior what can we say about those hands uh well at least the twilight drake is a pretty good opening for Strife Crow, but he's definitely going to be looking to fill his hand up with more threats like Mountain Giants and Twilight Drakes. Meanwhile, from Tide to Time, he has Executes, he has Shield Slams, so at least some answers. But at the same time, um, actually, he actually has Acolyte of Pain again, which is one of the key cards in this matchup. Yeah, we talked about this matchup, and it's uh, mostly favoring Handlock with those big minions. Strife Crow already has double Twilight Drake. And uh, Tides of Time has the, the Execute and Shield Slam to maybe try to counter them. But overall, Handlock is favored because it's pumping so many big minions. Strife Crew even has Dr. Boom. Uh, he only needs those Mountain Giants to get them somewhere along the way. One of the key cards being uh, Brawl, but then Tides is having Revenge as well. Oh my god. He's actually using Revenge. And you know what? It's not any worse than an Armorsmith, in, or rather a Whirlwind in Whirlwind. this instance. 
Exactly. Maybe like he gains two less armor, but I think he's still okay with it. Yeah, that's right. That was impressive. And uh, he has second revenge as well. He's having, uh, he's normally playing Blackwing Corruptors. He's having Chromagus. And you know, Cardra is so important in this matchup. So maybe Chromagus will be a key card. Also, Isera, we've seen, uh, we've seen Isera before being uh, amazing and winning the game with Isera Awakens. Uh, so I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Dragon Warrior by Tides of Time versus Dragons from Strife Crew. Yeah, we've seen before that. You know, dragons, uh, or rather, handlock typically is slightly favored against warrior. But with this dragon, new dragon archetype, it really changed. Um, made to fit. Yeah, it changes how you think about the matchup. So, right now, we are going to see re another revenge into shield slam. That's a lot of armor for for Tides of Time. He gets a uh, Corruptor as well, and he already has that Isera. So, all the Corruptors will work here. I think Monk got sapped again, but we are working on it to bring him back. So uh, here, Tides of Time just uh, pressuring with those small minions. Also getting a lot of uh, value from the Acolyte of Pain. There is a Mountain Giant, though. Mountain Giant can get countered by the Shield Slam. So using Mortal Call and that Acolyte of Pain, giving him more armor to Tides. And uh, Strife Crew will be disappointed that Tides, again, has ways to deal with that Mountain Giant in form of a Shield Slam. Volcanic Drake. It might look funny, but Volcanic Drake is another minion that's actually pretty good. It has 6 attack and uh, it, it needs to be dealt with. And Strife Crew, I believe... It's running maybe one Siphon Soul. Monk, do you remember Siphon Soul from Strife Crew? No, uh, I believe he definitely doesn't run Siphon Souls because in all of his previous lists of Handlock, he's actually cut them all out. So it really doesn't make sense for him to uh, move them back into his deck without any huge metagame changes. It's This uh, Volcanic Drake is actually very interesting. Um, it's at a key four points of health, which means that Hellfire won't be able to kill it off. An Ancient Watcher plus um, Shadow Flame would be able to deal with it, but you actually don't want to use a Shadow Flame on this kind of like measly board, I guess. Not to mention there is no Ancient Watcher. Is there a Shadow Flame though? Yeah, Shadow Flame there is. So Torison. Torison, and there is eight points of damage coming from, um, from Tides of Time. Uh, there's double Moltens. So 8 points of damage plus Death Spire, that's 12. Corruptor is not going to finish it. And uh, also, just going all in here will be very dangerous, because there is a possibility of a heal bot as well. So that's the time I just go for the for the clear. Clearing Torison with the Corruptor. The problem with the Corruptor is that I guess it uh, it invests more onto the field. And also, it's still kind of awkward for you to just clear with that because you have to sacrifice both your armor smiths in. So this uh, doesn't commit as much and you're less weak to AoE. And you still have a very threatening Volcanic Drake that um, will just be able to contest anything that your opponent plays pretty much. Wow, another giant. So Tides of Time dealt with double Twilight Drake with one Mountain Giant. And there's a Doctor Boom... All right, Doctor Boom was not played. But there is another Mountain Giant coming for Shrive Crow, so he's getting all the threats, all the powerful cards that are troublesome for Warrior. He has to account for Grumash, though. If there is Grumash uh, in hand, one. that's 14 points of damage coming out from Death Spite and Grumash itself. Exactly. So I would have to say that you would probably want to throw up at least a, a few taunts. You can also actually clear this board with Hellfire Dark Bomb, even though it's maybe not too efficient. But, you know, with the uh, buff of Emperor Thorazin, it's still enough. So do you go for um, for an 8-8? Eight eight? Like, if you don't taunt, you're dead uh, to Kromash. So you have to do something here. Yeah, I think generally in this matchup, you really want to use your Sun Fury Protector to, to taunt up two things. But... Again, if you're being greedy, the, the problem is if you play just the Sludge Belcher, then uh, 
it just gets a free trade in. Your opponent gets a free trade in with the death spike. By the way, this board is great for Tides of Time if you have a Brawl. So Striker exactly. at this moment says, hey, you don't have a Brawl. Because if you have a Brawl, I'm dead. Corruptor into the H2. Seems mm. pretty decent value from the Corruptor. Um, but then what, right? The, if you can yeah. deal with one of the Giants, but the other Giant is just looming at you. And uh, Tides of Time, he might even... He might even have to attack this Giant twice in order to deal with it. Which is certainly unfortunate. Yeah, he's going to set up for attacking the Giant twice. So he's going to commit to taking um, about 24 damage from this one Giant alone. Is there any merit into attacking um, the 8 to Giant with the weapon and then coining out the Sarah? Um, I guess there could be. It's just yeah, it so is. much damage though. He still had to attack into the Giant anyway. Alright, so uh, this is what we talked about before. A Tides of Time is running out of cards. Even though he was able to to get Strive Crew to 12 points of damage and um, deal with both Twilight Drakes, Mountain Giant, one Molten Giant, and second Molten Giant is going to die here easily as well. There's still Dr. Boom, Mountain Giant, and lots of cards for Strive Crow. And uh, Tides is only left with three, three cards that are not that great. At least he has the Acera, so that can definitely uh, get him back into the game. But yeah, like you said, the Volcanic Drake, it didn't do too much. It was kind of annoying for Strifeco to deal with, but overall, it wasn't as huge value of a minion as uh, Tides of Time would have liked. Absolutely. So here, um, Strifeco can basically protect that, uh, the Giant. I mean, deal 8 damage to face, and... Uh, I put up another taunt. He needs to set up these yeah. taunts. The only way he can really die is with some combination of a whirlwind effect or uh, an enrage effect plus the ground. Yep, that's true. There is a brawl. Oh man, one turn too late. If he would get that before, that would be an amazing brawl. But here, this is he just has to face tank the giant again. Yeah. Okay, Very unfortunate. Sir, I Sarah can actually be quite difficult for a Strife Crow to deal with. And Strife Crow might just have to um, try to bypass the Asura and try to finish uh, Tides of Time off before um, he can get enough value from the Asura. Tides decides to go for Emperor Torison though. Just get the, um, the possibility of a lower Sludge Belcher and Brawl. Maybe he feels he still has time. And playing his Sarah might be too risky because of a possible Siphon Soul. Do you think, do you think he's playing around that? Yeah, I think he's playing... He's looking at his hand, he's saying that I need a good brawl in order to win this game, and I don't really want to brawl my Sarah, so maybe this is the best course of action. Also, there's a card that's more likely than, um, than the... Um, Siphon Soul. The card that's more likely is Iron Beagle. We haven't seen any of them, and uh, there's normally two, and uh, most of the handlock decks. With so many cards in hand, Tides of Time might be thinking, hey, if there's Iron, Be Iron Beagle, I'm getting one card from Mister, and then it's like just a, a fun of the card for attack. Strifecrow is saying, um, I guess he needs to go Draxus here to heal up slightly, because he doesn't really have too many heals, and I guess uh, he needs to find some way to win pretty soon if Tides of Time does play that Yasera. And Infernal certainly is a good way to do it, especially after both Moltens have been played. That's true. But then there is that Brawl, so... Here with, with Yasera, there is still no good way to deal with her. And Tides of Time is going to get a Dream card. So yeah, if it's... Weekends. It pretty That's much has to be a Sarah Awakens because everything else Sharfko can deal with fairly effectively. Well, he can still try to get the Sarah Awakens next turn if if he's not forced to brawl. 
The Star Awakens would be so good, though. Strafko can actually clear this this era, but it just might be too much. He can uh, play the Mountain Giant, Shadow Flame it, and then run his slime into it, run his uh, hero into it. Decent. M might be the play, though, you know, just. Uh... I, I think it's, it's way too awkward. <laughs> Yeah, he also can just uh, set up a, a, a ton of uh, a wall of taunts, and you, you know, and just spending yeah. that last mountain giant. You, you do have Jaraxxus, You will have an ability to to put a six six every turn. So this is the point where I think you might just have to brawl, hope that Yasura wins, and that's yeah. pretty much the only way you can win the game. Oh, there is a Craptor. That's actually working because of the Drake. Time to YOLO. Is there anything else that you can draw into? Um, I think double shield stun was used. He used most of the removal early to deal with um, Twilight Drakes and Mountain Giants. I wield the power of Black Wing. Well, at least that's one way to deal with uh, deal with an Infernal. Pretty interesting too that the the, the Drake. Being a dragon actually makes a huge difference. Yeah. And he can also play the Bel uh, Belcher instead of yelling your brawl. So is he going to attack it at a 7-4? Attack it at a 7-4, get that whirlwind effect, get down to... Okay, decides to shield slam. It's not useful though. He has 16. Oh, he's going to clear it with Sarah first. That makes sense, yeah. Saving life. Just in case of Hellfire and some shenanigans. Yeah, I don't know if that's a winning play though, because he definitely has to rely on Sarah to win. But I guess after you get a yeah, Sarah Awakens, that's a um, pretty good play. That's pretty much the two best dream cards that you can get. And if uh, he can get, if ties of time, he can get something like a Sarah Awakens into Grom, it can be his ticket to win the game, especially with a huge whirlwind effect that can deal with taunted up infernals and. Um, this 5-6 Ancient Watcher. Yeah, but on the other hand, you have to mind your health as well. Because if you want to use Sarah Awakens, you at least have to have five points of, uh, six points of health so that you're not dead. And, uh, and if you want to attack with your weapon to get the Whirling Effect, this also means that um, you will not be able to attack in a minion if you don't have enough health. Alright, so Shadow Flame here. The Sarah is getting cleared. There is a new Infernal. Putting more damage onto the field. Oh and wow! wow. <laughs> that card. <laughs> Tides just snap play the Harrison. Just cutting the hands of Jaraxxus. There is Nefarian. And there is an Execute still. So this game is not over. Oh man. The thing is, you know what? Jaraxxus is on the field. So I think what may happen is going to the next turn, it might just come down to Nefarian being played. And if he can get a sacrificial pack from Nefarian, Tides will just sweep the game away. <laughs> wow, that's actually true. It can happen. Sacrificial pact in a competi competitive play. But he needs to have room for that Nefarian. He will need be to be in a situation where he can play Nefarian without dying next turn. All right. Strive Crew having Sylvanas, but no Shadow Flame. Yeah, if you is, uh, silence Belcher, how much damage do you deal? Eight. Uh, yeah, exactly eight damage. There's 13. But then you have to be afraid of dying, right? So with so many cards in, your, in, in opposing hands. What, what's, the, what's the actual line of play? Like, what do you do? Monk! Well, what I think you, you, you have to try to win as soon as possible. So I would try to set up lethal in either one or two turns. And I guess silencing the Sludge Belcher does help you do that, does help you get that extra damage in, especially because there's uh, not many silence targets in the Warrior deck besides the Acera and besides the Sylvanas, neither, neither of which are immediately helpful. What do you think about playing Dr. Boom and uh, silencing Belcher going for face? You deal 8 damage, you um, leave your opponent at what, at 5? 
So bombs are threatening lethal. And you do have a big board. Yeah, it's true. I mean this is this is fine as well, probably. Just keeping I, that I, silence for next turn. When I've talked to Strife Crew before about handlock, he's always told me that pretty much every turn you want to play an infernal. So I think he's going along with that philosophy. By the way, there is a Sylvanas top deck, so Sylvanas bro is pretty strong. Oh man. <laughs> that might be the play. Or the just brawl. Yeah, I guess you're not too worried about whatever comes out since you have an execute already, with uh, yeah. death spite and uh, in your hand or uh, equipped already. And it's gonna be ooh, that's probably actually the worst one to to come out of that. And eight damage to face. That <laughs> if Strifecrew would silence the Belcher and attack for face, that was threatening lethal. He Ties of Time would be dead. Minus three. Yeah, quite actually quite unfortunate for Tides of Time that that happened. So he, I think he actually has the shield made it now, or he just dies to um, a whole host of things. Any direct well, damage would plus the silence of, would kill him. He has seen a lot of things already. Oh, S Senjin! I didn't even notice that that card was in his hand. This is a Senjin Dragon Warrior monk. How could you miss that? Exactly. So this There's... just maximizes the armor he can get over the course of a few turns. Oh Whoa, wow! Double can... silence. Wait, is that it? No, it's not. But he can silence Senjin, and he can silence the the Ancient Watcher to attack with it. So he can deal four points of damage. Wow! This is so close. Yeah, I think he... the problem is I don't think he wants to silence his own Ancient Watcher because it is like it's his last line defense. Yeah. Uh, he... He has to rely on his opponent not being able to break it and not being able to deal 15 damage directly. Yeah, but the fact that he can actually silence both minions in attack is crazy because if, if Tides of Time would be on like three points of damage or something like that, you know, after the attack, wow, this game, anybody can win this game still, I believe. But I think Tides of Time has an advantage here. Yeah, almost certainly. Um, the one thing going for Strifecrow is that he's seen his opponent's Brawl, so he can try to uh, not play around Brawl in the future turns. All right, is it's, this... Uh, what do you do It's actually here? kind of... It's kind of actually awkward for um, Tide to Time, because he has an Execute, but he only has one Execute. And he wants to execute three targets? Exactly. So he either has to play the Shield Maiden in his hand this turn, or go for kind of a YOLO play in the form of uh, either uh, Yasera yeah, Awakens or Nefarian. The fun fact that Sylvanas play also stopped Yasera Awakens' Gramash kill, because Tides would not be able to... Or wait, he still would be able to, so he would just attack... Yeah, Grimash was still lethal, uh, but I don't know if uh, the Tides playing Grimash at this point with so many dragons. He might not be running Grimash here. Sarah Awakens, getting down to two points of health. And uh, putting himself back up, so Strifecrow is running out of threats. Is there any specific card for Strifecrow that he can play to win here? Nine health. Even Ragnaros is outside of range. Strife, is Strifecore dead? He, is... he doesn't see it from his perspective, but yeah, he's dead. Just uh, he, Strifecore has to assume that his opponent has weapons in his hand, and there's no way he can kind of play around that. He can heal himself, go to nine, oh, and then... Uh, that's actually, will... yeah, one off from what, yeah. uh, what Ties can do. Tides of Time will be one damage of lethal. But then, if there is nothing really threatening... I guess the 6-6 six, six is always threatening. So, <laughs> what is game? Like, what is happening? Did, he used double Death's Bite. He needs a... Uh, he used double Taskmaster. Is there anything in Tides of Time's deck? Blackwing Corruptor, I think, was used twice. Yeah, he needs a Grom, basically. Or, um, yeah, basically just a Grom. 
And yeah, Strife Crow, I think at this point he needs to lower the board, hope his opponent doesn't have anything. Cook Magnus, Magnus is not a draw. It. Wow, so what do you do? Is there is he in trouble? Like is this is the Nefarian turn and try to get something to buff. Um because if he gets a soul fire, he wins. Oh man, yeah, he's he going for Nefarian. He needs soul fire pact. power overwhelming or power of or sacrificial pact. Yes, it's three very cards. likely. I think yeah, this is I think this is the only option. It's gonna come down to Nefarian. A competitive game being decided on Nefarian. He's actually not dead. Like if he goes for Nefarian, he can trade if he doesn't get the kill card, he can still kill the free free and he's still not dead. But Nefarian can decide the game right now at this very moment. It's implosion Missed. and Bane of Doom, I believe. He missed. Oh my god. But he, he Such a it was possible to win just right there using Warlock cards against the Warlock. There yes. is a faceless. It's not doing Such much. Such a back and forth game. There is BGH though. Wow. Yeah, you can you can BGH faceless and hero power here, which sets up an amazing board. And, and this it just makes... forces your opponent to kill him on the next turn. Yeah, this actually puts Strife Crew back in the saddle. And now Ties of Time is facing this awkward board with dragons and owls. And a single farce here. Oh my. And Infernal. The is there thing anything? Is like, yeah, even if Grom comes on the field, there's no way to activate it. Yep, that's true. He needs Deathwing. He gets a BGH, but uh, no brawl. Bane of Doom. What can he even get? Doom guard. Gaddis isn't even enough. Uh, I guess that's just it. Yeah, that's it. They were so close. Such a nail biter match. Times of time attacking that Infernal. Wow. Just wow, Monk. What just yeah, happened? So, so we can see, we saw through like Tides of Time's entire deck, except for one card. So either Grom was at the very last card, or he actually is running a control warrior without Grom. Yeah, it's possible. Well, be because he has all those dragons like Chromagus and, um, you know, Revenge, Corruptors, Nefarian. Uh, so Strifecore is going to win. Like, it, I can't re really be b believe what had just happened, but Strifecore is going to win. Game number one versus Ties of Time and um, lock his hand lock. We are still going to see more warrior action from Tides playing that warrior. I'm amazed. Yeah. Um, I definitely think it'll be able to somehow later down in the line be able to get a win. Uh, Revenge is actually a good card, not just as for the one damage whirlwind effect, but against Hunter, for example. And it can very often get the full whirlwind effect. And it's going to be pretty interesting to see if Strife Crow actually does play around Revenge. For example, like you play around Molten Giant, you try to keep the warrior at above uh, 12 health. I might guess that the last card was uh, the second Volcanic Drake. But he might be playing one of. Because we've seen only one, I believe. All right, so uh, here, game number two. Ties of Time versus Strife Crow. Strife Crow winning the game, game number one. Hunter versus Warrior. We are going to update the score in just a moment. Uh, what do you think about those hands? So Strife Crow is running the midrange Hunter we've seen before uh, versus Tides of Time, Dragon Warrior. Tides of Time is laughing right now. Uh, what's so funny is that he has Fiery War Axe, I guess. He sees his opponent's life juggler. He's like, yeah, I have the perfect response to that. But what's not funny is he has maybe too many weapons, and it's very possible that from Strife Crow's mid-range minions that, um, like, even though Tides of Time will be able to deal with them for the weapons, with the weapons, uh, he'll take too much damage. Oh yeah, that's true. And Fireworks, one of the best cards you can get here. Uh, also having the Harrison and Brawl, you know, those are those are great cards. Those are definitely the cards you want to have versus Hunter. But then again, Strike Crow has a really good hand as well. Animal Companion into Pilot Shredder. Even Juggler versus uh, Juggler into Coin Juggler into the Haunted Creeper. It's a great start. Wow. Pretty heads up play there. He he kind of realizes that most likely he'll play the Death Bite on 
turn four. So I guess why not? Uh, why not just do three extra damage to your opponent's face? And oh my god, that's probably the only scenario where he probably wouldn't play the death spite, and it's actually better for him to uh, to s just set up the uh, death spite. But actually, yeah. this is still fine because he drew into the acolyte of pain on turn five. Yep, so he'll have powerful turn 5, killing the Hunter Creeper. Or do you go for Pilot of Shredder? Oh, there's a Execute, wow. So you can basically go for Hunter Creeper and execute the, um, the Shredder after afterwards. Drawing a card from the Acolyte of Pain. We don't see any high mains from Strife Crow. He, he still has 2 turns to draw into 1. Yeah, even though Strifeco has just been curving out really well and everything's going really well for him, the problem is like the remaining cards he has in his hand just aren't that valuable. To double unleash the Hound is exactly what you don't want against Hunter, who will most likely they'll only have um, one minion on the board at any given time. All right, so here do you silence? Do you deny draw? I think you do deny the draw. Um, you might even want to kill the one two with a two two, and. Uh, then you play Mad Scientist. We've seen one Death Spite already. Okay, so Striker's just sitting on the board, uh, denying the other. <laughs> it's so funny because Tides of Time has the standard control warrior. So somebody's tuning right now to see what is going on in here. This is not the deck that you are looking for. He actually has a lot of dragons hidden in his deck. Chromagus, yeah. Nefarian, yeah, he has some uh, He has some hidden dragons, but uh, not yet at any uh, Crouching Tigers yet. Crouching Death's Bites. Okay, so yeah. um, Death's Bite is yeah, pretty just good like, here. It is, but like, like we said before, he's getting rid of the threats, but all these threats have death rattles, and they'll have effects later on. In addition, he's just taking way too much damage from the threats, and wow, even with a kill command here. So is it just time to, yeah, I guess just Arcane Golem? Hero power? Yeah, hero power, and then you can, you have the uh, Houndmaster, or rather the Leash the Hound, to activate the kill command. Yeah, that's true, that's a lot of bursts coming from Strife Crow, putting Tides on 8 points of health, no respect for Molten Giants. Volcanic Drake is not, doing to do, uh, not going to do much. The, the secret is uh, Freezing Trap, right? Yeah, it's gonna, always going to be your Freezing Trap in this deck. So I think uh, the Volcanic Drake actually might be okay because it at least gives him a minion to play to proc the Freezing Trap. That's better than nothing. He still needs to shield some, the 4-1. The yeah, and I think uh, I think you like he has to decide whether he has enough life to actually just armor up instead of shield blocking. The other benefit of shield blocking is that you have a higher chance into draw into drawing some of your answers, like perhaps an Alex Straza on turn nine. So if he just uses armor up right now, um, he's not dead to what's happening. Uh, he's not dead to dogs with um, kill command because it will be turn seven. But uh, what is he dead to? He'll have ten health, so he won't be dead to anything. But Shieldblock yeah, is granting even, the card at least. Even I guess Huffer into um, into, Huffer into uh, kill, kill command hands. isn't enough. Like, wow, look at sergeant. that! What a pretty good card there. It's kind of like a Hellfire that doesn't deal damage to heroes for two mana. Yeah, exactly. All right, Strafker will be able to use the dogs now. There is a minion board. Oh wow, Eagle Humble. Oh humble. my god, that's even better. But there is a Harrison Jones, still. Even with Harrison Jones, Tides of Time is getting really low. Do you unleash once? I, I think you don't have to, like, Hero Power is doing more damage. Yeah, exactly. But I guess he does go for the unleash. Um, I wonder if this sets up lethal in any given way. So he does 4 right, damage so to his points. With what's... 9 damage, with 9 HP. What uh, what this is doing is that the dog is going to survive because of freezing traps. The dog is still doing the same amount of damage, and you do have a beast on board, so you are uh, more flexible with regards to the kill commands de dealing five damage, and not being forced to play. Um, it's, unleash. It's also 
It's also more flexible if you draw into your quick shot, for example. Yeah. Fortunately, both these cards are sort of dead draws, especially the uh, the Nefarian. A hundred cards tend to be aggressive, and there's no really cards that you can, no spells that you can get off of Nefarian that would really help you in this situation. Wow, Blevzuka is interesting here. Um, you can deal four points of damage with Unleash the Hounds, Blevzuka. Six with uh, the Hero Power. Or maybe you can just go for Glavezuka Hero Power deal four. Uh, put them at seven. They will armor up. Tides of Time will armor up to nine. And then you will have five, seven, eight. Not enough. Not enough. But Striker is definitely calculating here. No real reason to kill Harrison Jones. Harrison Jones is actually helping Strife Crow now because it's an outer dog. <laughs> so he goes for a, a full out play, dealing as much damage as possible here. Well, clearing Harrison Jones um, makes sense because then he can maintain the beast and um, turn it into the five damage he command next turn. Oh, there but Tides of Time draws the second Revenge. It's yeah, actually... It's revenge of Tides of Time. Tides unfortunately, of Revenge. Unfortunately for uh, Tides of Time, like, Revenge actually is just strictly worse than uh, Whirlwind's in this game. Especially because Revenge dealt three damage to his own Harrison Jones, whereas Whirlwind would have let the Harrison survive. Alright, Freezing Trap is not great. You can use Hero Power. How much damage? This is 7. 2 damage off. If you would get a beast, that's it. But oh, this is no beast. Uh, what can... Tides is still looking for... He doesn't have Alexstrasza in his deck. We haven't seen Alexstrasza. He has oh, a Shield Maiden though. Hit. Yeah, it's going to be excellent. Especially with the sh uh, Freezing Trap on the board. Sharfdo ran into kind of the similar problem when he was facing Trump, where his freezing traps uh, against the warrior, they were just pretty dead because um, his opponent just kept using the freezing traps to bounce back shield maidens. And I think this might just lock out the game, to be honest. Yeah, Tides of Armor up is getting lots of armor there. There is a Wolf Rider that's uh, five points of damage with hero power, eight. Again, not enough. And a freezing trap, yeah, the, the same problems you said. I don't know, man. I don't know, Cav. Doesn't look good for Ty, uh, for, for Strife Crew. Yeah, just, uh, I mean, even a high main here might not have done too much, but it was certainly his best draw. Oh, All right, man. I like him with the Shield Maiden first. Tides of Time actually uh, hovered over the, the Emperor Thor's end, which was clearly have been a mistake. Yeah, he's playing fast a bit. Tides of Dragon's Time. Is there lethal next turn? Uh, 10 points of damage, he's missing 2, not really able to deal. But he has 14. So maybe into... Basically Strife Core has what, 2 draws? Huffer? He gets Huffer! That's not enough, yeah. but it's still a lot of damage if he gets Quick Shot next turn. That's putting Tides of Time to three points of health. Oh, but you know, Nefarian might not be good for defensive plays, but you know what Tides of Time can get with uh, Nefarian? A lot of cards that deal damage to his opponent's oh, face. Arcane Shot, Quick Shot, Kill Command, anything Explosive would be pretty trap. good. So, can Nefarian win Tides of Time the game right now? Right here, there's Explosive Trap and what, a Deadly Shot? Yeah, Deadly Shot. Um, I, guess, I guess the Explosive Trap is kind of useful. Explosive Trap. Explosive Trap is nice. Uh, Huffer will not be able to attack, so Strife Crew will be there in trouble. Uh, Kill Command doesn't... Actually, Kill Command Quick Shot uh, does it. Kill Command and Quick Shot. That's it. Can Strife Crew top deck those cards? Pilot Shredder no. is not it, so I believe that's it. He has to attack with Huffer. He has that's to it. take his chances. It might be Snipe. Might be Snake Trap. Even if it's a freezing trap, he's still winning this. Only explosive trap. 
is killing him. No reason not to attack Stripe Crow. He's, uh, uh, Stripe Crow is like bouncing five with his fingers because I think that's because he's counting the number of traps that are possible. Uh, All right, so Tides of Explosive Time is winning game number two with Stripe Crow tying up the series one to one with his Dragon Warrior. I love this deck, Monk. I just need to take it and play it in a ladder. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of interesting aspects about the deck. We have seen Hyped play a Dragon Warrior, for instance, but Tides of Time is really taking it to the next level, adding cards like Revenge and Volcanic Drake into the mix. I'm not sure how good they are, to, to be honest, though, because, for example, in this game, playing two Revenges instead of Whirlwinds actually hurt Tides of Time. So that just might be something to consider when you're building a Dragon deck, or rather a Dragon Warrior specifically. Oh, yeah, certainly. Uh, so now, uh, unfortunately, uh, our score is uh, a bit outdated, but we are having a 1-1 one -one and uh, Strife Crow winning with his handlock, Tides of Time winning with his, uh, with his warrior. So right now we are going to see Hunter versus Warlock, and this will be the Murloc Warlock versus the Hybrid Hunter. Yeah, again, this is the deck that, um, from Tides of Time, that can either just win a match really quickly or go 0 3. And just judging from these hands, it's probably more likely than not that Strive Crow will be winning this match. Like, yeah, this is really interesting. Just a great curve overall. Plus, like, all these minions are really great for trading against, um, against the board of Tides of Time. Just very overall, very sticky. Leopardome will be a great turn one play. Honey Creeper will be able to clear so many minions that are one health from time to time. And then Eagle Horn Bow, again, just a great weapon to clear everything off. Wow. I, I just wanted to say that he needs a Voidwalker right now and really badly to be able to develop this uh, tight color. And, uh, and he gets it. Yeah, this deck really seems to be focused around keeping Murloc safe. And we actually haven't seen... Um, we haven't seen a Flame Imp, for example, and it actually wouldn't surprise me if Flame Imp is not in this deck. Yeah, that's true. And um, Tides of Time decides to play uh, Young Priestess, which actually enables him to make a Voidwalker kind of into... A... Well, there's this Abyss of Surgeon now, but if there will be no Abyss of Surgeon, Voidwalker could just uh, get buffed to a 1-5. One 1-4 one is still, gr still great. And now playing Abuse of Surgeon is actually super awkward, right? It's not on mana. Like, you would normally like to play a uh, Haunted Creeper. And Striker is going for it. Yeah, he just probably wants to play on curve more often than not. Haunted Creeper is representing more damage overall with those two spiders um, being able to, to trade into other minions. Yeah, he's... Uh, Striker was saying... Yeah, probably this Voidwalker will trade into my Leopardome, so then I'll be able to um, Eagle Horn bow it down and then use the Haunted Creeper to attack a lot of the squishy minions that my opponent can play. Well, this Murloc deck is able to snowball so much. So here, uh, Strifecore will be able to play either uh, Eagle Horn bow or Kill Command. Eagle Horn bow clearing that Voidwalker and then uh, attacking the to one with the Creeper not being not able to, to clear the juggler and juggler represents three knives because of the Murlocs in hand. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it'll actually be really relevant with these knives hit. It could actually change the whole outscape of the landscape of the game. Oh, what a miss. But the tides of time is two more chances. He needs to hit one of the spider uh, the spiders. If he hits oh one of the God. spiders. Oh my god, Double he missed. Miss. He missed triple miss. He missed all three knives. That's terrible. He's losing his Murlocs now and Knife Juggler, I believe. Well, and then there's silence as well. So sick. Yeah, this game with this single turn, three knives missing, and now Strife, Strife Crew having the silence is turning around into Strife Crew's favor heavily. This is kind of awkward, though. I mean, you might want to play the Silence, but you can clear off um, pretty much everything but the 1-1 one, one Murloc. 
yeah. right now, just with your weapon and the minions alone. And after that, you really don't want to silence anything, so you might just hero power here. You don't want to face tank that much damage, right? Like, you want to... Or is he going to attack the juggler? Because Tides of Time has fine. a lot of burst. Still, I think you value board control more than the damage to your face, because even though Tides of Time has a lot of burst, like Soulfires and Leroy, um, a lot of the other bursts, like Power Overwhelming, kind of depends on your opponent... Um, your opponent not um, having board control, essentially. But like yeah. you said, yeah, Strife Crow does um, want to heal for two damage to the face, so he, he essentially turns that um, that RMB Gal into heal two damage. It's so funny because here also uh, Tides of Time could consider going for face and be Tides of Smork. And with so much burst in hand, kill command the free two. Okay, this is a um, decent board, especially coming into the high main on six. So, Tides of Time needs more fish, needs to set up something else. Now the knife from the high main needs to hit the 2-4. It misses, so... Yeah. <laughs> Voidwalker just single-handedly contests both of those minions. Yeah, the, all the knife juggles in this game have been just overall very terrible. Oh man, the high main can be actually too, too slow. Too clunky versus this deck uh, full of small minions. Well, Mortal Code is not doing much. Soulfire is more burst. That's 14 points of damage here. It, there might be a possibility that maybe Tides of Time play that a bit too slow. Or a bit too fast, rather, because he could have actually uh, gone for Leroy Jenkins into a Mortal Cool, one of the. Um, Drakes, or one of the whelps that Leroy summons. Oh, right now he can more recoil the free one, so it's not terrible. And he's still um, far. Well, double more recoil, just dealing with small minions. He basically needs, what, four more damage here? Exactly. He is actually, surprisingly, he has 14 damage at first. So, but a second so far will be dangerous, so he needs like a second power overwhelming. Or maybe some of those minions to survive, because he has 14 points of damage right now in his end. Oh my god. Do you trade with that knife juggler? I, I don't know, I don't think there's any way you trade here. Uh, by the way, uh, Strife Core is dead. This, this, like, whatever you do, I believe this is it. There is 14 yeah, exactly. points of damage. I can't 17. believe this happened. Yeah, with on the bag of his Murloc deck, Tides of Time going to win game number three versus Strife Crow. Leroy Jenkins, power overwhelming, soul fire, 17. Well, actually, it's even more. It's um, 20 points of damage on turn eight. That burst. So yeah, Strife Crow doesn't know what hit him. <laughs> 14 yeah, damage mean, burst from the hand, exactly. Like, it even got, like, I think it got two uh, hits in on his opponent's face, and it just still wasn't enough. Tide to Time's certainly happy with himself for his performance there. And now it'll be on to his last deck, um, which is his Merle, or rather his... Hunter. His, uh, with his Dragon Drake. Hunter. Rexa. Yeah, Dragon, Dragon Hunter. Hunter. So our players immediately jump to the Hunter Hunter game. Dragon midrange against a hybrid midrange. And I have no idea which deck is better in this matchup, but it will come to, let's say, a Hunter-Hunter match. Yeah, most. I think the, the Hybrid Hunter is the more stable deck, but Tides of Time with Volcanic Drake and Unleash the Hounds, it certainly has a lot of potential for some huge comebacks, especially if you combine that with a Knife Juggler on turn 5. Alright, so some exciting times in front of us. What do you think about those mulligans, by the way? I think uh, you really want cards that are just really sticky early on and are able to develop uh, the board. You also want to curve out really well. So uh, I guess even Abusive Sergeant on turn one is a good play to contest Knife Jugglers, to contest uh, uh, Mad Scientist. Hunter Creepers, of course, uh, Mad Scientist, you name it. Those are all good. So who do you think um, has an edge? Well, 
we'll see from the mulligans. Actually, the I think actually one of the best cards in the matchup is the Glavezuka because it acts like an almost even better fiery war axe. Um, the two damage versus three damage generally isn't really relevant. And from right. this, um, yeah, Strikebro will just be able to clear pretty much any threats that can come out in the first two turns, short of uh, a Haunted Creeper. There is a high min for Tides of Time, but the Hound Master is, is really awkward for now. Juggler is great though. So all Animal Companion as well, so Strifecrow is having a very good situation. Kill Command on Juggler, that doesn't feel right, doesn't feel good. Yeah, we saw kind of like a similar situation in a previous game from time to time with this deck. But this deck actually just has so many ways to come back, especially with Night Jugger Unleash and uh, Volcanic Drake. So, you know, a a miracles can happen still. Especially with this pretty awesome Pilot of Shredder draw that can test the uh, Leoc so well. Both Leoc and uh, Glaive Zuka, actually. So, like, if Strife wants to clear it, it it's really tough. Um, you guys have Iron Beak out. So maybe with, with the Owl, Juggler, good juggle. yeah, good Juggle, 50-50. And sometimes you have to take those risky plays if you want to, um, to go uh, to get ahead. I wonder. All right, so it's Strife going for the Juggles and the Silence. And now this knife might decide how this match goes on. And he hits. Oh. Eyes is shaking his head. That was a very powerful juggle right there. But knife juggler into Alamo Companion is nice as well. If he, <laughs> oh my god, Leok. Yeah, just Neither... bad RNG rolls either way. And now oh. unleash the hounds into those minions, buffed by Leok, throwing the juggles. Strifecore is an amazing advantage here. Yep, Dice of Time recognizes the bad situation he is in in his Hunter Hunter matchup and he concedes. This means that Strife Crow and Tides of Time, they are tied. Tides of Ties. We are going to have game number five, Monk. Yeah, it's going to be game, Grim Patron Warrior from Strife Crow versus the uh, very strange Dragon Hunter from Tides of Time. And I have to give the advantage to Strife Crow here. With so many board clears like uh, Whirlwinds, Death Spite, Whirlwinds, and uh, the Unstable Ghoul, it seems pretty easy for Strife Crow to uh, deal with a lot of the threats that Tides of Time can bring on in the early game. Oh yeah, absolutely. So let's see how the hands are going to fan out. Uh, there is Leper Gnome and Juggler for Tides of Time. Looks pretty good. There is that Hound Master. Uh, Strife Crow has Fireworks and Acolyte of Pain. Uh, Threading Berserk is not bad as well so i think kind of even hands right like nobody has a, a terrible hands that we can see for now exactly uh i think strife crows might struggle to deal with like the leopard gnomes for instance if they get too much damage early on with either, even like one or two hits um strife crow uh, can have a difficult time dealing with them because the grim patron warrior unlike the control warrior it doesn't have shield blocks and it doesn't have shield maidens or to get life really quickly. The armor smiths are okay, but they're slightly more clunky um, than just a, a shield block per se. All right, so um, what do we see here? Like we we see Ties of Time having that uh, pretty good opening. Um, Mad scientist as well. And what will be his plan? Like his plan would be to kill his opponent before it's Green Patron turn, before Strife Crow starts coming out, playing those whirlwinds. Seeing yeah, fireworks, so, definitely not good. Um, the key point about this matchup is that the key turn for Tides of Time is turn six with the high main, and the key turns for Strife Crow is like turn eight with the Warsong plus Grim Patron combo. So uh, Tides of Time will certainly have the advantage there because um, if he can get the high main in, um, Strive Crow might not be able to respond fast enough by turn 6, in which he can get the Grim Patron combos off. Yeah, that's certainly true. And um, there, for now, there are also no Whirlwind effects for Strive Crow, so he's not able to easily clear those two. Uh, he might be forced to use the Inner Rage, but is it, is it the time? Or do you just go for, for Acolyte of Pain? Um, I like the... Like, 
I guess it really depends on what you think this trap from Tide to Time is. You would have to be thinking, like, Strife Grove definitely, like, saw the last few matches, but I have, like, actually no idea what traps that Tide to Time ran. I believe he ran a, an explosive trap and possibly a freezing trap. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I think it's, like, double freezing, one explosive. And uh, okay. for players, uh, for, for viewers who are joining us right now, this is um, the semi-final, Tides of Time versus Strife Grow. The winner is going to adva advance to the final to face Forsen. The, the current score is 2-2. Two to two. This, is, this is a tie. This last game, game number five. And uh, this is pretty exciting. We've seen a lot of dragons. Green Patron versus the Volcanic Drake Hunter. Yeah, so actually I think um, depending on what trap Strife Grow thinks this is, um, he's going to play slightly differently because if he thinks this is a freezing trap, I think he'd rather get the uh, the Acolyte of Pain on the field in order for it to uh, combo with Whirlwind effects. But if he thinks this is an explosive trap, this can be even more threatening from um, for Strife Crow to have a huge Frothing Berserker come up, for example. Okay, so... Um, now, there's, now there's a slightly bearable board. With Misha. And um, if this is a freezing, what do you do? I guess uh, you yeah, I guess, attack. To yeah, I guess you still attack, exactly. I, again, a Strife Crow kind of had a crossroads to consider, depending on what trap that was. Um, if it was an explosive trap, the best play probably would have been to just throw the second frothing down and trade into the animal companion. Whereas if it's freezing, this is obviously better. Yeah. Wow, with Juggler and that uh, Med Scientist high main being drawn, it looks good for Tides of Time uh, because we, we were talking about that before, but this kind of warrior, it actually struggles to gain health. So you can snowball into winning. And Tides of Time is a pretty nice, bo uh, nice board. This warrior, this green patron warrior, doesn't have a brawl, doesn't have a, doesn't have a shield block. It relies mostly on uh, creating its own board. But right now, it's Dice of Time who is having a board. He has a removal, kill command on turn 5 if he wants to. And that high main is a follow up on 6. Even with execute, that high main is still uh, creating hyenas. But there is no execute for Strife for now. Just developing yet more of a board, forcing his opponent to deal with the board. And just hope, hoping to God that he draws to uh, into some actual ways to deal with these threats. Oh, he wow. has an unstable ghoul at least, but oh man, Tides of Time with a double kill command in his hand. Not only that, he has a high main. This is looking um, kind of grim for Strife Crow because he hasn't drawn to any of his armor smiths yet. Oh yeah, and uh, right now we are staring at 9 plus 7. 16 points of damage this turn. Uh, using kill command because there is a beast on board and you have the mana to do this. Oh, he's even uh, filtering his deck and getting a secret. Putting yeah. Strife Crow 9. This exactly. is dire straits for Strife Crow. I think even more important there than filtering through the secret was that he got rid of the 3 2, which would have contested the, uh, the Misha from time yeah. to time. So just more important to keep as much of his board alive as possible. Make it very awkward for his opponent to deal with this board. All right, so what, what can Strife Crew do here? Uh, this is really difficult. There is a Taskmaster. So, potentially, if he plays Warsong, this is going to, uh, to get frozen. Oh, wow. This is Explosive Trap. Yeah, we do know that Tides of Time at least runs one Explosive Trap and at least one Freezing Trap, so we're not really sure otherwise. Um, the benefit, like, Strife Crow here, the problem is that he can fairly easily deal with this board, but the real question is, can he deal with, uh, the high main that follows it up? Alright, Strife Crow is not out yet, he has the taunt set up, and, uh, there is a Leper Gnome. So high main is getting dropped, and, uh, still Explosive Trap. You know, Explosive Trap is also troublesome, because that's two more points of damage. Not really able to deal with the high main right now. Yeah, no Might... real answers. So I think Strife Crow actually just has to battle rage here. Yeah, battle rage for uh, an execute maybe. Battle rage. Maybe his best draw here is uh, Dread Corsair. 
but I believe that's not it. So I guess another Battle Rage? So yeah, he needs the Battle Rage again, and then draw into both Fire War Axe and a Dread Corsair. Is Slam doing anything? Not really, so it seems like there is nothing to deal with this high main. Well, this hold on. Sl slam into Execute um, yeah. would slam into deal execute. with the high main, and he'd only have two uh, a two attack creature on the field, plus seven damage from hand. That wouldn't be lethal yet. So he, he just needs to go for that slam right now. Yeah, but if uh, if Slam misses Execute, if it's not an Execute, like Slam into Inner Rage clears the high main, I guess. Armor Smith is not it, so this means there is no way to kill the high main anymore, and Tides of Time is going to take the series with Kill Command, high main attack, not even using the hero power. What a series between those Cloud9 players. Uh, Tides of Time advancing to the final to face Forsen with his Dragon Dex and the Murloc Warlock. Strife Crow coming really close again to getting to the final, but not really. Something was missing there. Yeah, just really exciting play from Tides of Time, bringing some really amazing decks. And you know, Tides of Time, even though he was out of the scene for a while, and you might call it that he was in a slump, it, he wasn't really in a slump in the sense that he was only out of the scene, and he wasn't actually like uh, going to tournaments, competing at lands, competing in online tournaments, and failing at them. Just rather, he just took took a simple break, and he came back as strong as ever. Oh yeah! All right, monk. Um, I'm also uh, I'm almost ready for the final, but I think we lost our um, our production manager right now, who was not updating the score. So. We are going to go into a short break right now and uh, set up the final for you guys. Forsen versus Tides of Time coming up soon. Give us some time though. We are going to get back after the break. Don't go anywhere. Tell your friends. Forsen versus Tides of Time. Cloud9 versus Forsen Boys coming up soon.